Okay, so today I'm going to show you how to map a rust texture over a metal texture. Uh, mainly I'm going to be talking about texture mapping textures over textures when one texture has a transparent background, such as this rust here, and um, this metal is obviously not transparent. Um, so I'll show you how to make this. Um, it's just a sphere, but I, that seems to be the traditional uh, mesh to do texturing demonstrations on. So uh, before we get started in Blender, let's uh, go into GIMP, and we're going to create the specular maps and the normal maps for the two textures we're going to use. Um, I've already created these, but I'm just going to show you how uh, that would work. So in GIMP, um, first of all, you are going to need the normal map plugin, which if you have a Linux machine is as simple as searching GIMP normal map in your software center and installing it. I don't know how to put it on a uh, Mac or Windows system. So that's some research for you if you own either of those. So obviously I have it installed, but you just click the install button there and wait for it to install and then restart GIMP. So now that we have that installed, we're going to open up our um, textures, which are buried in a seemingly endless there we go. Alright, so to create the specular map, first we're going to right click, colors, desaturate. Okay, and that creates, if you notice, it's gray instead of a bluish in this case. So for um, metals, the specular map doesn't do much to the color. Um, so then we will save this. I've already saved it, but I'll just show you how I save it. I normally save it as underscore spec. And, uh, no, I don't want to replace it because I don't know if it's different. All right, so then we go over here to the base image. Over on your right-hand toolbar, base image. Right-click, filters, map. And if you have that normal map installed, there will be normal map. Um, and when you click OK, it gives you a normal map again. Just save it as, oops, uh, air metal, and I normally do underscore normal for my normal maps. And again, save, but it, I already have one named this, so I won't save it there because I don't want to change anything. All right, and so we, um, you'll need to do the same for the rust, so we'll open up rust textures, and this is our rust. Open. Oops, let's close this one out because we don't need that one. Uh, don't save. Alright, so you, whoops. Our, uh, cancel. How to come out. Alright. Alright, it won't make much of a difference. Alright, so um, as you can see, we have the transparent background and our rust texture. This is the diffuse. We'll need to create the specular colors, desaturate, uh, okie doke, and then we save that as underscore spec, but I already have one. And then again, base image, filters, map, normal map for your normal, and uh, normal mapping rust may seem a little odd, but it gives a nice effect. Underscore and it's already there. Alright, so now we can close out GIMP. Discard changes. And now I'll show you how to make this now that we have our texture set up, okay? So, this is the node tree we're going to be creating to uh, map all this to the sphere. So, this is a blend file I've already created. Um, but I'm going to start with a new blend file and show you how to start from the ground floor, as it were. So, let's go into camera view. Zero and shift a add a uv sphere uh, f6 go in here and deselect align to view all right and then we'll go in our toolbar over on our left and hit shading smooth i'm sure there's a shortcut for that which i have not memorized now that's all the modeling we're going to do now we're going to go up here into our node editor and this button takes us to the object uh, texture data so we'll click that, and then we can add new. All right, and we're going to keep all the 
all the stuff that's normally here, but we're going to add a lot. So the first thing we'll need to do is add a texture coordinate because this will be used for quite a bit. In fact, it's so big, why don't we open up um, this in full screen by pressing Control up arrow. Now let's add an image texture. Image textures are going to be uh, the most what we use the most in this. So then you're going to connect the vector to the UV and the color to the diffuse shader color. We'll open this up and let's start with our dull metal texture or bare metal. I think that's what it's called in here. We'll open that up. All right. And so now if we were to go into our material, uh, control down gets you out of um, full screen mode. If we go into our material shader um, here in the 3D viewport, you notice it doesn't do much because we need to unwrap. Now, I would, um, with this UV sphere, just unwrapping um, by selecting all and then smart UV project doesn't really work well with the sphere. So I'm going to quickly um, create a seam down the back because that is how Blender likes to do its unwrapping. You create seams and it unwraps along those seams. So just create a seam. I know Alt click does uh, ring select or edge select, but on a Linux machine, Alt select doesn't does that, which is irritating. All right, so then again, there's probably a shortcut for mark seam that I don't know, but just go over here your toolbar UV mapping mark seam. Uh, if you deselect all, you see it's marked red. So uh, use A to select all of them. UV unwrap. All right, and now you'll see that our material is mapped. Actually, that looks a little big to be metal, so let's uh, get on this joint, right-click, split area, and let's open up our UV image editor and not render results. We want to go to bare metal. And if we tab in, shift A, we can uh, rotate this, and you'll notice it's updated live in the 3D viewport. So we'll rotate it a little this way, scale it up, until we get some nice texture going on there. I guess this is a seamless texture, which I, so it probably is from CG Cookie. All right, but you can see it looks good, but there's no bump mapping. These bumps here are the vertices. So that looks good uh, for just a diffuse. What we're going to add now is the uh, specular. So let's go back into full mode, control, up arrow and we'll duplicate shift D this image texture alright vector going into UV and let's go ahead and open our specular image again bare metal spec now for the specular we need to add a converter RGB to BW which takes color and converts it to black and white so we'll drag our color from our image texture into there and the value of this is um, going to go into a mix shader, which I forgot to add earlier. So we're going to go shader, mix shader. And the reason we're doing this will become clear in a minute. This value goes into the factor here. And uh, what we're going to do is add another shader, glossy. Now glossy acts more like a mirror. Um, so, and that's what a specular is on a, um, on a texture, is the reflectivity. So by adding a diffuse shader, we get the color. Glossy shader gives us the reflection. And this um, specular map just tells it how to mix the two. OK. So now that is um, the specular. So if we were to go into actual rendered, whoops. Oh, I didn't save it. Let's save this as rust, rust masking tutorial. So 
So now that I've saved it, what I was going to say is if I go into rendered, hopefully it doesn't crash this time. Okay. So um, now you can see. Actually, it'll be better. You'll be better able to see it if I go in and add a plane. Add mesh plane. And we can add an emissions to that by going and clicking add new and then clicking on the fuse here and going to emission. And now if we go and if we whoops. So now we can see that specular really working, which that looks pretty good for a um, metal. All right, so now let's go into our top or full screen on the node editor. Now we'll add some normal to the metal. So we'll just select the image and the um, converter and Shift D to duplicate both. Plug the excuse me, plug the vector into the UV and the value here into the, dis the displacement in the material output. Yeah, stop jittering. All right, and then we'll op open up our uh, normal map here. All right, so we'll save and control down, and you'll see now that it looks better. We actually have a normal on the edge, um, and you can see that um, light reflecting off the normal. Okay, so that is the um, metal. But what about the rust? Well, let's. Um, or B to open up our uh, box select. Select all that. Shifty and uh, drag it down here. You may have to use G um, to get it back up there. All right, and then we're going to drag our texture coordinate out here, and we're going to drag a UV to each of these image textures. Okay. And now we are going to add another mix shader because as of right now this is the metal mix shader and this is going to be the rust mix shader we need to figure out how to get both of those into one surface port here mix shader is how we're going to do that and later we'll see how we're going to get those to mix All right because if i plug it in right now right all right Let's open our rust texture. So this top one is going to be the specular. That's how we set it up earlier. Specular. All right, metal rust decal rust. That was the um, this middle one is the diffuse, and this bottom one is the normal. Uh, with the way I set it up, you can set it up differently. It doesn't really matter. That's just the way I set it up. Okay, so now if we go down, you will see that the metal got darker and the rust got is now is now in there but it's light. So if we drag this factor up, you will see the metal continue to get darker but the rust continue to get brighter until all the way at one it's just rust and the transparent is um, automatically assigned black. If we go all the way to zero, it's just metal. Now, we don't but the metal becomes darker as the rust becomes more clear, and we don't want that. So, in order to change that, we need to adjust the factor. And what we'll do is we'll copy, shift D, the um, uh, specular map for the rust, the rust, mind you. And then we'll plug that value into the factor. Now, you notice it doesn't do much because we need to add a converter math plug it into that line and multiply, change it to multiply, and then we can multiply by 6, I think is a good number. Now the rust comes through without the metal becoming duller, and you can play around with this number. If you get it up too high, then the rust just kind of looks like more like blood. Um, so 10 is a little high, 9, 9's probably good. But now if we click our ball, press the period or decimal on your um, numpad to rotate around it. Now if we click it, you'll notice the rust isn't actually standing out, and you can see that even cl more clearly if we zoom in here to where the uh, specular is. Um, 
the rust doesn't actually look like it's standing out. So, but we do have this rust normal up here. How are we going to combine those two? Again, because there's only one displacement on this material output. Well, we are going to go into converter math, and there is two points for two values. You can plug each one in, and the add value originally works just fine. That's, that's the default. Now, if we go down, you will see that rust actually stands out from the surface. Okay. So that's how you're going to map the rust. But say that specular was too much. You wanted it to be a really dull metal that, you know, been rubbed and and uh, was not very shiny. You can go convert, add converter math, plug it in there, and we're, again, we're just going to change it to multiply. And now you'll notice it's less shiny, and if we multiply it by 0.1, it's even less shiny. That looks like a dull metal. Um, and, but if we look at the rust, uh, looking at it again, it looks like that may be too much, so let's go down to 7 for this multiply. That looks good. Okie doke. So that is how we create this tree to map two images. Now, if you just had the diffuses, it would be much simpler. But this incorporates specular maps, diffuse maps, and normal maps for each one of them and maps them all onto one object. And this is the result. All right. Um, when I scaled up the UV map earlier, it um, the rust is mapped to the same UV, so that's why the rust is um, just repeated around the circle. Um, so that is how you map a rust texture, or any texture with a transparent background, over an existing texture. Um, rust is probably the most useful, I won't say most useful, most common use for this, um, but you could, you know, if paint got splattered on a wall or something, um, that you could use this technique to mask the transparent background texture over the existing one. Uh, so that's my tutorial. I hope this helped y'all, and uh, don't feel or feel free to comment and ask questions if you if I wasn't clear on something. So thank y'all for watching, and don't forget to subscribe.